when Sambuvarayar came to the front gate, he called Kanthamaran alone and said, Son! Today our clan has faced an unprecedented danger. If we want to escape from it, you must immediately do what I say without any hindrance. Karakalar's death had greatly disturbed Kanthamaran. He also realized how big a mistake it was that he wanted to kill Vandiyadeva. He said, Father! This danger has befallen our clan because of me who is a fool. Forgive me for that. I will fulfill whatever you order. You must leave this mansion immediately without anyone knowing. You know there is a tunnel that goes under the bed in my bedroom, right? It goes from the hunting hall to the wall of this mansion. Father! Are you telling me to leave them alone in this predicament and escape through the tunnel? Said Kanamaran. Child! Are you forgetting your promise and talking? Yes, you must go. You are now the only one left in the family of Valval Ori, the leader of the Kalim Hills. If necessary, you must go to that mountain and live in hiding. You must return only after I have sent you a message, making sure that Madhurandakath Devar is defeated. Said Sambuvarayar. Forgive me, father. It is impossible for me to live in hiding. Shall the disgrace of such a coward come to Valval Ori's clan? If you ask me to give my life this very moment, I will. But I will live in hiding. Said Kanamaran. Sambuvarayar thought for a while and said, Son. I told you to test you. You don't like to run away and live in hiding. Good. I'm going to send you on a heroic mission where your life is at risk. Get out at once through the tunnel. But don't go to Koli Hill. Go straight to Tanjavur. Great Pula Vetere. He is probably there. If so, tell him what happened here. If he is not there, tell Chinapalya Vatarayar and Madhurandak Devar. Sir. Let me tell them what happened here. What is this question? Tell them about the death of Kari Kalar. Let them know that what we intended has happened differently, Kari Kalar is dead. This is the right time to crown Madhurand Hagar. Say, it must be completely destroyed, said Sambuvarayar. What shall they say when they ask how Kari Kalar died? Said Kanamaran. What else does it say? Say that Vandiyathevan of the monkey clan has killed him. One more important thing. Remember this very well. Vandiyathevan has returned to the country of Elam. He has seen Aralmazai Deva there and then younger Prati in Paliarai. There is a news that Aralmaz Hidavan has now emerged from hiding in Nagaipatnam. The rumor that Aralmaz Hidavan sent Vandiyathevan to kill his brother because of his desire to climb the lion should be spread in the Chola country. The suspicion should be raised that the younger Prati is also complicit in this. Couldn't what they say be true, father? Couldn't the traitor Vandiyadeva have come to this mansion with such a terrible intention? Possibly, my son. But do you want to find out the reason for the sudden and mysterious disappearance of the young queen of Palvur? Valavera and Vandiyadeva blames her and the dangerous people of Pandya who were her accomplices. The one who committed the crime will blame it on others. Now I understand everything. Father. The old goddess Kundave never caught the young queen of Palyavur. She must have arranged to kill the Kari Kalar and at the same time take away the young queen of Palvur. The first minister Anuradhar also seems to be an accomplice. That is why they are doing this Vandiyathevan. They have sent. Alas! Have you gone astray without knowing their trick? Kandamara! It's no use regretting what's gone. You have to see what's next. You leave at once. Before the news of Karagalan's death reaches Sundara Chola, before anyone else in Tanjore knows it, the Palyavetareus and Madhurandakar must know. So hurry. There is a secret tunnel to get into the Tanjore fort. You know that, don't you? No, no. Then leave at once. I'm leaving, father. I'm a little worried about my sister Manamegali. She. You don't need to worry about that. I won't let anyone else do the same to us as she did to us. If she tries to do that, I will kill her with my own hands. 
Oh, that's what I'm worried about. I'm afraid of their anger. No. I know a way to change her mind. Aha. Fate is strange. At first we thought of giving her in marriage to Madhurandak Deva. In between we changed our minds and intended to give her in marriage to Carrie Kaler. Carrie Kaler lies dead today. Fortunately, Manamegala's soul did not tell him. Our old the purpose itself is to be fulfilled. But father. Manamegala's soul seems now to have gone to that Sand Alan Van Dye the van. It's nothing, my son. Manamegali has not yet learned to know her own mind. I will take care of her. Don't you stay here a moment longer. At that moment Kanamaran heard the uproar which had recently arisen outside the walls, Father. What is this? It looks as if the Malayan army is approaching. What did the old man say when he saw the Malayan in the evening? He asked. He told me good auspicious news. The old man was very happy to hear the news that Monimi Kala was going to be given in marriage to Adithakari Kalar. In the same Manapandal, he had brought his daughter's granddaughter to marry him. Isn't she beautiful? When I called to come to the mansion, he told me that he would come in a good mood at dawn tomorrow. Looks like they're celebrating their upcoming wedding. Saying this, Sambuvarayar smiled. But the laughter is half gone. Come. Come. I'll take you down the tunnel and leave. You mustn't delay a second on the way. You must earn a horse somewhere along the way and hurry away. Said. Sambuvarayar took a lamp in his hand. Both entered the tunnel. They walked quickly. After Kanamaran crossed the wall of the mansion, Sambuvarayar hugged him and blessed him and returned. Do you want a light? When asked, Kanamaran said, No, father. I know this way well, don't I? Even if I am blindfolded, I will go. He said. After he disappeared into the tunnel Sambuvarayar returned. On the way he entered the hunting hall. He asked if there was any noise in the next room. Didn't hear anything. He hesitated for a moment. Then, as if he had come to a final decision, he sighed. He stirred the lamp well, placed it where it should be and hurried back. When Sambuvarayar went back to the fort, he gathered all the Parat women together. They were all already distraught. They somehow knew about Karakalan's death after hearing about Manamekalai, who was brought to Apuram by Kanarung Kambala and Kandamaran. Ladies! A great calamity has befallen our clan. You must be ready to leave this mansion at any moment. You must be brave enough to spend time in the mountains rather than many days. Come, all of you, with your garments and ornaments, and come to Nila's courtyard. When there is a cry or a lamentation, monk. Don't even ask. You know. Warn that. Then Sambuvarayar came to the front door of the palace. He wanted to climb the front door tower and find out what was all the commotion outside. He did not have time to do so, for just as he was approaching the front door, soldiers from outside broke down the gates of the fort and came stumbling in. The gatekeepers tried to stop them and fell down. Had. Apart from this, soldiers were entering the fort by climbing over the ramparts. There was great panic and confusion in Sambuvarayar's heart. Did Malayaman know the news of Karagalan's murder, what? How do you know within this? If you know, let me know. Should know anyway? But they should be delayed here for some time. A delay of half an hour is sufficient. By then our intention will be accomplished. Sambuvarayar went to the middle of the Nila courtyard between the fort gate and the front of the palace and stood majestically. A sharp sword flashed in his hand. Behind him stood seven or eight soldiers holding long shafts. Some of them were holding torches in their hands. Thirukovalar Malayaman and Parthapendran came following the warriors who came forward by breaking down the gates. Seeing Sambuvarayar standing in the middle of Nila Yard, Parthapendra pointed him out to Malay Aman. Both of them came towards Sambuvarayar. As he approached, Malay Aman said, Sambuvaraya. What is this I hear? Will you do such a mischief? Oko? 
What is this? You are standing with a sword in your hand? What is your intention? He kept asking. I stopped to ask you that question. What is your intention? What was the purpose of breaking down the door? I came a little earlier and called them. You told me to come and look for a good day tomorrow. Sam Bavaria. Good fortune has come now, that is why I have come. Where is Aditha Kari Kalan? Where is the brave Pandian headed warrior? Where is the conqueror of the Saver battlefield? Where is my grandson? asked Malay Aman. If you ask me, what do I know? He will be where the prince pleases. Did I tell you before that I will not hold any conversation with that rascal? Parthipendra knows that too. O oh Sambuvereya! Don't try to deceive us by making such vain excuses. Bring Adita Kari Kalan immediately and hand him over to us. Otherwise, I will demolish this castle of yours and destroy it with dust. Roared Thirukovalar Malay Aman. Parthipendra? What is this old man mad about? Has he suddenly gone mad? Who am I to bring the prince and surrender him to him? Who is he? Am I holding the prince captive? Or is he going to take the prince captive? Said Sambuvariyar. Parthipendra said in a gentle voice, Sambuvariya. Don't panic. The old man has a reason to be angry. Look at this leaf. You will know for yourselves. Saying that, Sambuvariyar gave it to his hand. He got a good look at it by the light of the torch held behind it. Prince Aditha Karagalan's life is in danger. Please come and save him immediately with troops, the leaf had written. While reading it, Sambuvariyar's face was sweating. Just as Karakalar's body had trembled at the sight of Karakalar's dead body earlier, so was it now. What a plot! What a conspiracy! Who could have written such a piece of paper? He stumbled. What if whoever wrote the letter? Bring Aditha Kari Kalar here at once. Or take us to where he is. Otherwise, shall I ask my soldiers to leave and search? Asked Malay Aman. Well, sir. I am going to take you to where Kari Kalar is. Parthipendra. You know the place. I learned a little while ago that Palyavar has gone to the palace of the young queen. Take him there yourself. Said Sambuvariyar. Parthipendra said, Yes, grandfather. Come. I'll take you myself. He said. After saying this, Parthipendran looked towards Andapuram where Ila Irani Nandini was staying. Ouch! What is this? He screamed. Because, as far as he could see, the fire was burning. A thick layer of black smoke hung above the embers of the fire. Everyone looked in the direction he looked. Fire! Fire! A panicked sound emanated from everyone's ears. Parthipendra, a little stunned, said, Sambuvaria. At first I did not believe this leaf. Now I do. Some intrigue and conspiracy has taken place. Pata! Tell these conspirators to be imprisoned immediately. I will go and look for the prince's whereabouts and bring him back. He said that. Sambuvariyar said again in his old bold voice, Yes, Parthipendra. There have been intrigues and conspiracies. But you are the ones who have done it. You have broken down the door of my palace. You have ordered your soldiers to set fire to the AV. If there is any danger to the prince, it must have been yours. Beware. There will be a time of revenge for all this. Said. Parthipendra ignored his words and ran away. At the same time, a group of women of Sambuvariyar family came from inside the mansion to Nila Yard. Their facial expressions showed their confusion. But not a whimper or whimper was heard from anyone's voice. Some of them had their attention drawn to a spot of light at the back of the mansion. They hugged each other and pointed to the blazing fire, Manamegali also saw it. At once so. Oh. Fire. Fire. There he is. She screamed and started running towards that direction. Sambuvarir interrupted and stopped her. He gave her a slap on the face. Manamegali, 
who had never been treated like this since birth, Sambuvarayar's darling Manamegalai, stood staring at her father. Sambuvarayar said in a slightly pitiful voice, Stupid girl! I warned you before? Why do you make me angry? And said, Look! Know that there is no need to run away screaming! Said. Vandiyathevan was coming from the direction indicated by Sambuvarayar. Aditha Karikalan carried the lifeless body on his shoulder. Having focused on the discussion between Sambuvari and his daughter, Malay Aman now turned to Vandiyathevan. He stood staring blankly as he staggered over and carried someone on his shoulders. Somehow his senile body trembled. There was a kind of horror inside. He looked at the person who came close to him and wanted to ask something. But I didn't wake up. The throat is completely blocked. Vandiyathevan came near him while looking at Malay Aman. Sir. Here is Prince Kari Kalar. I could not bring this warrior with the head of Veerapandian to them alive. I brought only his body unburnt. Now you acknowledge your grandson who was killed by fate and conspiracy. After saying that, Vandiyathevan slowly lowered the corpse of Prince Kari Kalar down and laid it down. He immediately fell down and lost consciousness. Old Malay Aman sat next to the prince's body. He stared at his heroic face for a while. Suddenly his whole body shook like a mountain shaking. Alas! From his throat like the roar of the sea. Came a sad voice. He alternately beat the head and chest with his iron-clad old hands. My wealth! I have come to see you in Manakolam. I see you in Pinakolam, he screamed trembling in all directions. Later, Amutaburung lamented the events that had happened since the birth of Aditha Kari Galan. He mentioned the celebrations on his birthday. He cried as he played on his lap, arms and shoulders as a child. He told him all that he had taught him to throw and fight with a sword. In the 16th Praya, Asagai recited one by one the heroic deeds he had performed on the battlefield of Siva. Oh! Shouldn't you have died in those heroic battles with the Pandyans and attained the hero's heaven? You must have fallen a prey to the intrigues of this Sand Alan Sambuvarian and his conspirators. Alas, did I send you myself to be his guest? I am old. Thinking that you want friends here, Ivan did you send your daughter believing that if you marry, she will be in your party, did you send her as a guest to Yama's house thinking that she would send her to Sambuvarian's house? Am I not the evil one? Am I not the one who killed you? Saying that, he hit his head again and again. Then he suddenly got rid of his sadness and reached Rotharakara and looked around. Aid Sambuvaria, tell me the truth. How did the prince die? What trick did you play? Even if Devendra himself came and resisted, you could not have defeated him face to face? How many men did you send against him? Where did they hide and how did they kill this brave warrior? Tell me the truth! He roared. Sambuvarayar also angrily said, Old woman! I am waiting for your old age. I know as much as you know how the prince died. The prince has brought the corpse, if you ask him, he will probably tell. What is the use of asking me? Said. I. This has happened while I am your guest in your palace. You speak as if you know nothing. Who will believe this? Well, when Emperor Sundarashola hears you, tell him this reply. Soldiers! Imprison this Sambuvarian. Demolish his palace, wall and floor. The old man commanded in a thunderous voice. Parthipendra, who had returned just then, looked at Malay Aman and said, Sir! We have no responsibility to destroy this mansion. Lord Agni has done the work. Look at that! He said. Malay Aman looked and saw that the fire which had been seen earlier in a corner of the great mansion was spreading rapidly. He saw that Aparundi, which had grown gigantic and burned up in the sky, devoured the roofed houses, Machu cushions and Gopura colasses and rushed forward with its thousand and ten thousand red tongues stretched out in search of more and more prey. He also saw the soldiers of Thyruko Valor standing in awe as they saw the horrible scene. Okay, okay. Lord Agni has accepted our work. 
Well done, Parthapendra. Let's leave at once. Emperor Sundarashola of the Three Worlds has been telling me for three years to see his eldest son. My daughter Vanamadavi has been sending me advice after advice to bring the prince. Let them see the dead body of the lifeless prince for the last time. Let us not let the body of this valiant hero fall prey to the fire that has engulfed the house of the Sandal Sambuvarian. Let us take it to Tanjavur. Let us take it to the Emperor's Sanithan," said Malay Aman.